How are things though, Warren? It's, it's good. A long time no see. We haven't yeah. seen you in a while, actually. I think the last time I was here was like almost like last summer. Yeah. It's been a while, even for yeah. me. Yeah. Like when did uh like with COVID, you're still operating, right? Like you're allowed to because it's like private. With COVID, I shut down. Okay. Technically, yeah. right? But in my lease, I negotiated something that I didn't have to pay rent during COVID. Oh, okay. So it was an easier shutdown for me than other people. But um, that was close to when you like you got the gym and then COVID was pretty soon after, yeah. right? So we got, no. the, got the gym in June and then the next shutdown was the following January. Yeah, but you got this place because like during COVID. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I came here because the OIC shut. Yes. Down. Okay. So it was after the yeah. initial COVID outbreak. Yeah. So, so I was at a big box gym called the Ottawa Athletic. Yeah. Club. That's where I met That's you. That's where we and, met. And David, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I, but I don't think <clears throat> you and I interacted that much, though. Not really. You were more of a night guy, like the powerlifting yeah. night crew. Yeah. yeah. And I was, uh, I was a morning guy. I was a desk, you know, desk and track. Yeah. How was the transition going from like a big, uh, to a big gym like that, to like a public gym, to owning your own private gym? Like, what was the thought process in that? Because that's really scary. Yeah. You know, going from like, quote unquote, an employee to being your own boss and having to operate a whole business that you, I don't know if you have any business background or this was just you diving into everything. Well, like technically I own my own business at the Ottawa Athletic Club. I was an independent contractor. Mm. Um, so I always like to have control over things. I felt like with the amount of work I put into things, I would want to have control. So there wasn't too much of a shift to that. It's more the managerial side, all of the administration stuff that I wasn't used to. Yeah. So doing that now, that takes the majority of my time when I think that I really enjoy the training aspect, but sometimes it has to take a back seat when you're a business owner. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, were, but, were you pretty confident like enough people were coming with you, like clients? Yeah, like you, I made my business proposal and my uh, business plan. Yeah. And looking back, I, I made three different scenarios. 50% of people followed me, 75 and 100%. And after everything, about 50% of people followed me. Okay. So it was at the lower end for me, but right out of the gate, like this beautiful place, yeah. nice equipment, good kind of community that I had built through the 10 years I was at the Idol Athletic Club. Yeah. People did follow me and then people bring other people, right? So yeah. everything worked out pretty well for me. I wouldn't have it any other way. I wouldn't go back to that now. Yeah. Just because it would be hard for me to listen to other people's maybe that's not the right thing to say <laughs> yeah what opinions and stuff like people no, saying it wouldn't work or not opinions but it's more so like the training aspect like you should be doing this like mm. during a sales call tell people this like i remember I some of the stuff at a big box gym it's like tell people if they say they can't afford it ask yeah. them like how much money they spend on coffee or what they spend mm. out at a dinner like that's i don't think you should be getting into that stuff with people that's more their personal life yeah you yeah. want to focus on more of the outcomes for people exactly yeah i think i think i mean i think that's mm -hmm. a trend in sales in general right now but especially for something like health like when you're investing in health it's like i'm not trying to trick you into yeah. buying this it's like and we, it's like I, i've through what i've learned in sales it's if someone doesn't want to buy something, talking them into buying something isn't going to give you a valuable long-term client. Yeah, exactly. Like if somebody's willing to make that change, then yes, they're good to have. Yeah. But if you have to talk them into it, then it's probably not the best. Yeah. Like, like there will be problems down the line. There's yeah. actually a book I just read called Unselling. It's this guy, Kevin Casey, he's like from Newfoundland, but uh, his whole concept is like, your goal with selling isn't to sell, it's to get to know as fast as possible. Yeah. Like if they like figure out that this isn't for them as fast as possible and move on, because yeah. you just want to find the people this actually benefits and actually works for. Yeah, and like, like you guys know, like owning your own business, there's only so much time you have and you can dedicate to that. Yeah. So if you can dedicate whatever, those, those hours to your clients that mean a lot to you and help you and pay for your services, then you should do like give more time to those people. Yeah. But isn't like knowing the <laughs> fact that like, locking in a client is somewhat difficult and then going from like to this giant beautiful gym that you have right like because usually people like don't this is like their 10-year plan like what you have right now is someone's like 10-year plan yeah. right like you why why make that jump you know like were you just really confident with yourself knowing that you got it or uh, what was the thought process behind that because this is really scary you yeah. know like i don't know like just doing anything business related is pretty scary but going to like this level yeah well this this was like and again i've been doing this for almost 20 years now so again this like when people see this they're like oh you've took this big jump but it's been slow for me yeah like this isn't like just i went from nothing to something okay like i've always had a large base of clients at my old gym and i've always dealt with a lot of high level athletes like one of our intern probably 15 years ago and then working at the oac and now i'm here um i was confident because mainly i believe in myself and i know how hard i work I believe if everybody else like worked as hard as I did and do, then they can be here too. There's no like, yeah. there's no secret sauce to this. It's just 
wake up early, work as hard as you can all day, mm -hmm. learn as much as you can, and then go to bed and just repeat. Yeah. You have to be consistent. If you don't feel like waking up and working hard, it doesn't matter. You still have to do it. And that's what I like about owning a business. There's no, there's no way you can sit back and not do that and be successful. Yeah. So it depends on like what you want to do. If you want to just be happy working a nine to five, that's fine too. But mm -hmm. for me, I could never do that. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Like you're accountable for yourself and that's it. Yeah. It's on you. Yeah. Um, but was this like at all a plan you had before everything shut down? Oh, yeah. yeah. Like for me, this is ever since I was in high school, I wanted to own my own gym. Okay. Like, so just playing sports growing up, like I was always in the gym helping athletes I, and I got a lot of help myself too, just being coached by other people. And then, um, like learning from these people and then being in the gym community growing up, I always thought I want to own this eventually. So like I started coaching basketball, coaching volleyball, coaching people in the gym, even when I was in high school unpaid. And so I've always wanted to do this. Mm -hmm. It's not like something that I just picked up later in life and I, I wanted to do it then. This has been like a goal of mine for almost 25 years. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's crazy. Cause even at the OIC, like <clears throat> I knew you when I was powerlifting and I would like ask you questions and stuff about what I was doing. And it was unique. You were the first person I met that was like the first personal trainer, just like fitness person that wasn't just, yeah, you do high volume to build muscle, like the very basic knowledge. Like you were very like, oh, your lower back's hurting. Like that's because your glutes tight. Like there's these very like unique, like intense things that I would never have known. And it was like, you're, you're very knowledgeable in, in, a, in a way I didn't see up to that point. And I think that comes from personal experience too. Like for me, I fractured my back. So yeah. learning how to rehab something like from a textbook and how to do it practically are two different things. Like yeah. if you tell me your back's hurting, I have to be able to empathize with you and think like, oh, I know how that feels because I've been there. Yeah. And that's where I think there is a bit of disconnect for like the practicality and the theoretical knowledge in my industry. Um, so I think getting a coach that has been through these issues before, whether it's certain level of athletics or injury prevention, you're going to be better off having somebody that's been through these things mm -hmm. what what is your experience in sports like were you ever like, what uh, like, level like I played playing? high school basketball volleyball and then club basketball um, nothing too good like I was always like a more of like a grinder I would say yeah but I always wanted to like jump high right that was my big thing when I was a kid is like how do I dunk a basketball mm -hmm. and if you uh, like I know it sounds kind of like a, it's a funny niche thing but if you played those sports you know how important that is for sure mm -hmm. so for me training growing up like that was my number one goal so my friend would have these funny shoes that like you have these big pads under their toes so i'd run around my neighborhood with them pull my calf think like okay that's learn from that. <laughs> yeah. okay, that's not the thing to do yeah and then so after that like after high school i stopped playing basketball i wasn't good enough to play like college level and then i got into weightlifting and i competed like provincial level again i was pretty good i was getting better and better and then I fractured my back mm. and that ended that I tried to come back after fracturing my back and then I ruptured my Achilles and then Jesus. I was like, okay, so how'd, you, yeah. how'd you break your back? I was actually at the OEC and I was warming up and somebody was running around the track because okay. there's a track around oh, where the way yes, section yes. was and somebody just came onto my platform and ran into me and I just like turned me sideways and just, yeah, so oh, fractured two Like with the bar joints. on? Yeah. Oh, it was just man. warm up too. And oh. then uh, herniated three discs and fractured two facet joints. So, oh, but again, like looking back, even if I had made it to a higher level of weightlifting, I wouldn't have, it's not like you make money or be successful really. really. Yeah. Like I was never going to go to the Olympics. Mm -hmm. So looking back and then I got to learn how to rehab back injuries. So mm -hmm. I think it may have been the best thing for my career in this industry. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, you have lots of experience with injury, so you've, you've experienced it, but, uh, but I guess, yeah, for you, it was the goal wasn't so much being a pro at the sport. It was just like figuring it out, learning it and, being yeah. able to train it one day like well i think everybody wants to be a pro when they're younger for like, sure. that's just the goal yeah or at least play collegiate level sports but sometimes it's not in the cards for yeah, yeah. i mean the, you realize now like when i have young athletes come to me people always tell me and their parents tell me like we want our kids to go professional mm -hmm. and i say well like there's such a small minority of people that get to that level what we should be aiming for for these kids is like get an education at a good school right mm -hmm. if you can leverage your athletics and get an education at a good school, that should be the ultimate goal for people. Yeah. Like whether you're going to NCAA or anything, if you can have the, that education paid for because you're good at a sport, yeah. why not That's crazy. take advantage of that? Yeah, that's so true. So right now, <laughs> like what what is your main focus? Cause like, I know like with this gym, this gym, you built this gym with like an intention of like rehab and just like, yeah. uh, like athletic. for, for, uh, for athletic yeah. development and whatnot. So like for you as a, as a personal trainer, like what, what is your main focus? 
Well, right now, like in the day, it's mainly injury rehabilitation and just mainly general pop training. So just if anybody's coming off the street for a training uh-huh. and at night it's high level athletics. Um, personally right now, like my dad has Parkinson's, so I'm focusing more on like neurodegenerative diseases like Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, these things, you can see the benefit these guys get mm-hmm. once they go through like a workout, like the stimulation they get, they leave happier, healthier, postures better. So I think that's like a big personal kind of goal for me is to get into that realm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in order for you to get that, do you need some sort of certifications or no, like do you I, need to just, can you, a normal personal trainer just do the things that you're doing right uh, now? Like there's certain like certifications you can have that I do have, but it's more, I think like, um, I think it's more just having a passion and helping people like that. Mm-hmm. Right? Like you have to want to do that and not everyone really wants to do that. Like everyone that gets into my industry now, I find the young guys, it's like they want to train professional guys. Yeah. But sometimes like when you deal with these older people that have degenerative issues, their training is literally life and death, right? Like they, mm-hmm. may, they may develop these issues and get worse and worse and have a kind of a step disease and get regress until they like can't get up, can't move, do anything, right? So everybody wants those high level pro guys, but sometimes having the general pop injury rehabilitation clients makes it more of a difference for us. Yeah. And like, yeah, you have a real, like you said, life or death impact on these people that could actually change their lives. Like that's crazy, but no, it's cool. It's like you come from a very, a place of like the things you experience and wanting to learn about them and then pass that knowledge on. Like, yeah, it's not so much about the glory and being a pro, but I'm curious a bit more about like the business side of things. Like, um, Cause obviously, yeah, it's a big gym. Yeah. It's not cheap. Like this yeah. is, there's a lot of equipment here. <laughs> like, like what's, so I know you have some trainers that work here and train their clients. You have some physio, you have like different classes or not class, but group training. Like yeah. what's the split there between like your clients versus like what other trainers are doing. And, uh, we're all pretty even, I would say. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we have physiotherapy, we have kinesiology, like injury rehab, and then we have our athletic development. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And again, like we've built a pretty good team here. Like I, really care about that i value our relationships it's not just like i'll bring in anybody off the street because Mm -hmm. at the end of the day it's a reflection on me and like you guys know with your business it's a reflection of you too right so who you bring in really impacts you and like um so yeah yeah it's pretty even i want to like step back a little bit with the gym thing like like for this gym like i'm just out of curiosity i don't know how comfortable you are with this question but like what's like a startup cost to like start a gym like this like give me a give me a breakdown like how big is this gym and like, what was the, like your initial investment for, for a gym like this? Um, cause this is okay. like a high end. It's gym. crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's a high end gym. It's when, not like yeah, a normal yeah. gym where so people it, it, go it, do curls and I, I know like there is a formula that some people will use like per square footage. Okay. And so this is 6,500 square feet, but about 2000 of the square feet is non like functional gym space, kind of like upstairs storage, and yeah. storage, showers, things like that. Uh, usually you're looking at probably like for me personally, it was the startup cost is about 350,000. So coming into this, like putting my house in the line, putting the car in the line, like I was all in. And I think if you want to succeed in business, you have to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? I mean, yeah, like, you're like, clearly all in. Cause it's like, yeah, there's certain investments <laughs> that when, like I was going to say, yeah, like when you're starting a gym that's meant for one-on-one training, it's not a public, you know, membership yeah. gym. Like usually people get one room, maybe the size of that smaller gym there. And like, that's the whole thing. And they have a bathroom that people change in. Whereas like, this is two stories, multiple gym, like three yeah. different workout spaces, full size change rooms, and then like custom dumbbells, like with that rotate, it's like, you really did go all <laughs> in, you I know? know, it's like, I know. And you have like, uh, equipments I've never heard about before, like yeah. the board boards, right? Oh, and, yeah. uh, and, and, and all those things. But I feel like the people that will pay for your services, they appreciate that. Of course. Right? Like yes. If you're dealing with people that want to pay for training, people notice the finer details and things. And that's mm-hmm. how I would like, if I was looking for a gym, that's what I would look for. Yeah. Whether it's custom dumbbells or specific equipment, anything like that, like people appreciate those things and notice the small things. And it's, it's purposeful. It's not like, like just cosmetics. Like these are like wide grip with yeah. the rotating to help with your joint pain. And like yeah. there's purpose to these things. Oh well, yeah. Grip strength. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. So like, did you know <clears throat> who your clientele were going to be going into this gym? And that's why you got, you invested into the higher end uh, equipment. Yeah. Like I just, uh, again, like my clientele has always been the same. Usually I deal with more pragmatic, practical people. I would say like less emotional. Like I don't really take too many of the, I have a wedding in like three months. Mm-hmm. I want to lose 20 pounds kind of person. Um, not saying that's bad. It's just that that's not the client that I deal with. Uh, usually it's more of like the the engineer is the doctor kind of brain where it's like, I know what I have to do consistently put this work in and I'm happy getting like small steps to get better. Mm-hmm. Um, I just need someone to kind of 
give me the frame. Exactly. Give me the me framework. It. Help me out through exercise technique and show me what to do. Yeah. Not sweet. Um, when you did, so you said like 50% of your clients came over. Was that, were you still kind of scrambling to try to bring in more? Was that a very high priority or were you more focused on just the ones you had and that, slowly growing it? That's a good question. That's, I would focus more on the people that I had. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because like, I think the biggest thing, whether you're in, like we've invested in advertising, mm -hmm. well, I did it with you guys. Mm -hmm. I've done it myself. The best advertising you can do is word of mouth in my industry. Like yeah. if, if you get one client or two clients from a client that you've done well by, mm -hmm. then it's worth a lot more than any ad you can ever produce. For sure. Absolutely. So for me, it was all concentrating on the athletes that I had and the injury rehab people that I had. And, um, yeah, like, cause I had a big stable of athletes before and then COVID happened, right? So two years, so let's say you're a 15, 16, 17 year old hockey athlete. You go down to the States two years go by, like you're somewhere else in life or somewhere else training. So it's hard to get those people back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but the general pop people that I knew in Ottawa mainly stayed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you do have higher end clients too. So like yeah. you don't need necessarily like a like a hundred clients. You can, yeah. you can, you could be comfortable with having 25 or 15 or however many it is. Well, that's what I always tell people. Like in terms of if you're starting your own gym, you don't need more than a hundred people. You yeah. A hundred committed people that are really willing to invest in your services. Mm -hmm. It's not like you need to go out and get 500 people or like when we were at the OAC, like have five, six, 7,000 members. Yeah. Cause Jesus, it's just, that's it, a lot. It's not going to be sustainable. You won't be able to service those people well. And eventually you're going to lose people. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather do really well by a small number of people than like an, a mediocre job with a larger number of people. Yeah. yeah. What, like, what did you think? I know we're going back, but like, what did you think about the OAC? Cause like to me at that time, this was like the best gym that exists, you know, it's like, it was Honestly, so cool. It was awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. And I do miss like the big gym feel of seeing like a bunch of random people yeah. the day, right? Just different people that you would, in, you would interact with that I would never see otherwise. Mm -hmm. So, and like, Having being at the OAC was also I'm grateful for them to have me there because I got a whole bunch of clients from there. Right, yeah. without without being in that big box gym setting, I wouldn't have had the clients I have today. That's fair. And I always tell young trainers that too. Like people don't want to go to Good Life, Mobody Body because they think it's like kind of a step down. They want to work at like these higher end places, but there's no like if a new trainer comes to me, they're not going to be able to see a hundred different people a day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you want to like start those big box gyms, hone your skills, see as many different people as you can. And never say no to somebody that needs help. That's what I mean. Yeah, when you're early on. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah, no, it was it was a really cool spot. Like, like I would do an eight-hour track shift in, like, six hours that were just talking to people, like, yeah. just hanging out. Like, it was it was a very cool vibe. It yeah. was sad when that closed, but. I yeah. know. That was, a, that was a beautiful gym. Like, that was the very first gym I actually attended to. And you literally had everything. Remember the, the squash racket? Yeah, area? yeah. I would go there in the winter and I'd, I'd throw my pitches. <laughs> I, oh, wow. I, I remember I'd throw a baseball. Actually, it wasn't a baseball. It was like a t-ball. Yeah. So it was like a little soft. And I remember like a, like a, a worker coming in and was like, hey, you just can't do that. You know, I was like, hey, it's a softball. You yeah. know, you it was pretty funny. But um, mm. operating from like a big box gym in comparison to this, how is your operation different um, in comparison to uh, a big box gym like that? Well, again, there, like, I was just an independent contractor. So let's say my hours were, like, I would set my own time. Yeah. So if I'm coming in from 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. and I have eight clients, I just come in, train the clients, and leave, right? Okay. So it's like I have no operational uh, responsibility. Okay. Right? So, but here it's much different. Like, mm -hmm. here I have to do all the billing, all, like, a lot of the cleaning. You have to keep all the upkeep of the machines. So I'm much more on the admin side now mm -hmm. uh, or just a little bit of both. Um, yeah. Yeah. But there, there it was strictly training. Yeah. Which I do miss a little bit because that's like what my passion is, obviously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But again, to get to a certain level that I want to get to, you have to diversify a little bit. For exactly. sure. I mean, when you own a business, like you are everything. Like you yeah. own, wear every hat. I was having this conversation the other day with a guy who owns a, uh, a home service business. And like they do some like really sick content. And like we were just talking back and forth. And the other day we were building some stuff at the studio. And like I was like, isn't it wild? Like you build things for your job, but you're a full-time content creator. We yeah. have a content creation business, yeah. but we're building things every day. It's like when you own a business, you literally have to do everything. It's but that's insane. the beautiful yeah. part about it though. is because like you become so diverse, you yeah. know everything. And when you do delegate your tasks, nobody can fuck you over. Yeah. Right. Because for example, if like, yo, like you're fucking up my accounting. Like, I kind of know how that thing is, you know, like no, nobody can really steal from you or like yeah. you just know how things should be running. Yeah. Right. And that's, so, that, that's a good point, too. It's like for my QuickBooks. Yeah. Right? You have to know how your QuickBooks work. So like <laughs> yeah. I have a bookkeeper that really helps me out. But yeah. um, like if things aren't right, I know it because I took a weekend just like learn myself. Right. And you have to. Yeah. If you want to be successful. Yeah. Like, 
You're not with Tamara anymore, eh? You, yeah. You taught, you are? Yeah. Yeah, she dropped us. Oh, she did? She, she got a second job, so she's like, yeah, I got to drop some clients. I'm like, <laughs> oh, we, she, weren't, we weren't big enough. <laughs> we we were, we're not making enough money for her to uh, keep us, bro. We also oh. put her through hell. Like, when we first started, <laughs> we had just changed bank accounts, so she was like, she had to deal with some trouble but she's been awesome she was great like even like she's sweet. i just talked to her like two days ago she yeah was, she was awesome no she's but and <laughs> like we can cut this we're set up. but i think she's like uh she undervalues her oh yeah and like like we kind of talked about with you guys i think like a while ago it's like you really have to value your own services yeah right? like yeah. she does a lot of work yeah and, um for like a little bit of pay i was surprised and, and, like i feel like honestly yeah. bad like i just wanted i was like i'll send you more money i know how long this takes because mm -hmm. like we talked about what, what quick books and tales yeah and, yeah and i'm like why I'm sending you thirty dollars? I know you just probably worked like two or three hours. For yeah, this. like this but doesn't make sense. But that's the thing, because sometimes when you're like kind of quote unquote running your own business, you kind of feel guilty. Like yeah. like oh my god, like yeah. am I charging a lot of money for this? But yeah. the thing is, like for you, it might take you four hours to do something. But the person that's asking you to do it will take them like two days. Yeah. And that's two days worth of work that they could be putting in working on their business, right? Yeah. But like when you start your own business, like when Mason and I first started, we were like, oh, fuck, man. Like we're going to charge $100 for this. This is a lot of money, you know? Like uh, should we even tell him that this quote is like $350? But now it's like the more like you appreciate your value and understand yeah. your own value, you're just like, yo, this is, this is what I charge, right? Um, there's one guy that uh, I was talking to or like, he said something along the line of like, he doesn't charge based off people's budget. He charged people, he charged people based off of the value that it's providing, yeah. you know, and that goes a long way. And that's a hard thing to place a monetary value on that as well too. Like yeah. His value to his work is different than what you perceive his value Correct. would be as well. So at the end of the day, you just have to make your pricing. And if you believe in it, then stick with it. Like people will ask you for discounts and yeah. yeah. I mean, they can always go somewhere else, right? There's other yeah. gyms, there's other, media companies yeah you put the you put the decision in their hands and if they want to do it they do it yeah but that's, it's like you said too about like it's not about like when you're talking about bring on new clients like it's about the outcome more than anything yeah. because if you're saying okay yeah it's this much an hour this much per video this much per whatever like they can nitpick and negotiate whereas it's like these are the results we're going to give you this is how much we're charging yes or no like yeah, that's yeah. that's the offer there is no hourly rates or whatever like you decide but the thing for us too though is sometimes like when sometimes when we operate from a desperation from a place of desperation like okay fuck it we'll we'll, we'll charge this much instead yeah. you know instead of like we kind of devalue ourselves just because we are somewhat quote unquote desperate like okay we need the extra cash flow so let's just take on this client do you ever come across that same issue where like okay i'm kind of running low on clients i'll take this person even though this person wants a discount uh, no, I would never do that because I feel like that's disrespectful to the clients that I've had for like five, 10 years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like let's say like, and let's say I have old clients that I, I do like, I'll stick to our older pricing that we had like just previous, just because I think that's a nice thing to do for them and they've yeah. been with you for a long time. But if somebody comes and asks me for a discount, that's a brand new client. Why would I give them a discount if I'm not giving someone that's been paying for my services for 10 years a discount? Wow. Yeah. Right? Like that's what I believe. That's it interesting just way. doesn't make, doesn't make sense to me. And I think that's what a lot of other people don't understand as well. Yeah. And it's hard to value that loyalty. Like, why shouldn't they get a discount? Yeah. yeah. And why should this new person? It's true. And like, <clears throat> there's just something about it. It's such a classic thing, but the people asking for discounts are going to be the highest maintenance people. Yeah. Like, whereas the people who just like, that's the value. I agree with you. I'm in. Like, they're just happy with what they're getting because they see the value. Whereas someone nitpicking a few dollars is also going to nitpick how much they get out of it. Yeah, like, and exactly. that's what I've noticed too. And that's what I talked about, like the emotional people over the like the more pragmatic people. Yeah. Pragmatic people can see your value. And usually maybe they're business owners or something. Mm -hmm. right? They know if, they, if you say a price, that's the price. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's like you say, you're literally saying to your, your uh, bookkeeper, like, this yeah. should be more <laughs> like you should charge yeah. me more because you see the value. But it's like, it's like you don't go to farm boy and like negotiate like, yes, the, price exactly. of, like, the price of a banana. You don't yeah. go up to the cashier and do that. So why would you do that in other industries? Yeah. And yeah. I find it like, I don't know why that's trickled down into different industries, but it has. And like for you, like if you're doing a lot of business owners, that helps. But for us, like our clients are always business owners. So it yeah. helps us to say too, like, look, like, if someone came to your gym, for example, and wanted 20% off your personal training, would you do that? No, because it's the value. Yeah. It's like we can kind of, they can, we can help put it in their mindset, like make well, it make sense. And same with you guys. Like I know 
now that I've like started to take videos and I've always been like pretty yeah. not anti social media, but I never had social media before. Yeah. Like just doing like taking videos, it's so much work. Like the editing yeah. process yeah. you guys You're have doing to go a through. great no, well, you're doing one hell of a great job for that though. It's it's crazy. You are good, man. Well, I just like learn. I just like take a weekend, I'm like, this is what I want to learn this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. My wife will be like can you come to bed? It's like 2 a.m. I'm like, no, no, I'm on this YouTube. I gotta learn how to figure out Final Cut Pro. Like, yeah, it's okay. Okay, so you're using Final Cut yeah. Pro to edit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Final Cut on Apple. Yeah. No, we've been we've been seeing the content, man. You're good. Cause like, yeah, there's one thing. I mean, first of all, just the act of doing it on your own. Like we've been talking about all episode of how much you have to do to run a yeah. business. To then throw learning and doing video production is not easy. Yeah. So it's sick to see, but yeah, no, you do you make good stuff, man. Well, and that's what I think when we talk about sacrifice. I was just talking to somebody about this the other day. Like, you cannot be a good business owner, a good husband, a good friend, a good brother, a good father, right? You have to sacrifice some of these, like, areas of your life. Yeah. yeah. And so, like, you have to be able to sacrifice something. If you're not willing to do that, you probably shouldn't be going into business. Yeah. Because, like, I'm, I'm sacrificing, like, my social life. Like, yes. we don't go out. And then, like, a, a part of that is that I sacrifice, like, my wife's social life. Right? Yeah. Like, it just mm -hmm. happens. So, like, we have to stay in because I want to learn this. Mm -hmm. And I get a little obsessive over things. Yes. Yeah. So, it's like, I have to learn this this weekend. If I don't, like, I know I'm going to work 60 hours this week. So, if I don't learn it tonight, I'm not going to learn it until next yeah. week. Yeah. I'm going but, through that right now, man. Yeah. It's just, like, sometimes, like, for, for example, I was supposed to have dinner with my girlfriend the other day. I told her dinner's at 8. I left the studio at 8.30. <laughs> you yeah. know? And it's like a, and it's like a 45 minute drive to get home, you yeah. know? And I'm just like, oh my God. Yeah. And but it's also like, it's like eras, you know, like you have, you have periods in your life. Like when you're starting a gym, of course, you're gonna have to sacrifice your social life and stuff. But maybe if one day you're a little, you have more trainers in, you're a little more hands off, then you can kind of lean more in that direction. Yeah. Like it, it's not, okay, the rest of my life, I'll never stay no, out with course. my friends yeah, again. Of course. So it's like, yeah, you gotta, you gotta be able to say, I'm gonna sacrifice that right now because I need to do this. I need to learn this. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, like, so yeah, you're learning it. <clears throat> you're getting Final Cut Pro going. You got, you got the new, you got the DJI mics. You're like, you're going no, I got up. The, uh, <laughs> not the DJI, what is it? I got the road mic. Is it mic. not? Oh, the, the road, road mic. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. But in my YouTube rabbit hole, I did see DJI mic two or something. The new is that? one. Yeah. It's sick. It's sick. And then, but you get into this thing, like, look at all this beautiful equipment you guys have. Yeah. Now it's like, how much more stuff do I need? Like, you don't. For you me, don't. It's, I don't need that much stuff. No. Even the mics, like, the new mic, it's sweet. Like, the new yeah. DJI mic, I love it. It's really cool. But, like, we have the high, highest end road version. It's like, yeah. yeah, it has one other feature, this or that, but it's like, I can record audio. I'm good. Like you don't yeah. need to be so, especially at like when you're just doing it for yourself. Yeah, like yeah. for us, it sometimes the equipment just kind of makes it justify what we're charging. You know, if we show yeah. up with like, we could absolutely film all our client videos on our phone, like, cause it's social media content. Yeah. But first of all, you know, just being able to say like, this is different than if you were to do it yourself, like there's reasons and this gives us more control and this and that, like, it, it adds to the value, but at the end of the day, yeah, you don't need yeah. all the equipment in the world. Well, again, it comes back to like perception of value. Yeah. Like we could, I could do all the, a lot of the stuff I do here in a tiny little gym. At your home. But again, people like the experience as well. So yeah. like the experience we're getting now is a lot different than if you just had your phone set up. Exactly. On exactly. Yeah, absolutely. It's and so we, true. And we talk about value too, like the amount of time I put into making videos, like you guys could probably do it in one tenth of the time. Yes, mm -hmm. that's very true. But yeah, like what, what's like, how are you like getting ideas for these? Or is it just stuff people are asking you day like, to day? Like I'll just get random questions on Instagram. Yeah. I'll just get like random ideas pop into my head. Yeah. And I find like once I get that, I write it down in my book. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I'll come back and film this. And mm -hmm. then sometimes I'll film things for like two hours in here. It doesn't work out. And I yes. just get frustrated. I know. <laughs> and by, and those like, are the worst. It doesn't make any sense. The those talking are the worst. videos are hard. Or like yeah. you film it all and you feel good. Then you start editing it and you're like, oh, yeah. I like I, I can't even this. use this. Yeah. You know what you need to invest in if you're doing a lot of talking videos is a teleprompter. Yeah, I was, I was thinking about that actually because it's like a, for me, I'm like I like to have a script. I like to yeah. say all these things. If I forget two things, I'm just like this technique. Yeah. Because like yours is technical. Yeah. Like. Yeah. yeah. But that's the one thing too, though. Like you, you also <clears throat> got to learn how to act naturally. You're yeah. almost acting as well. You gotta act, you gotta yeah. add the hand movements and the hand gestures because otherwise people will know you're just reading off of a script, right? Yeah. I also think the biggest thing that helped me with social media was just. No one really cares. No. Yes, That's what absolutely. I like, Nobody if, does. If I miss like this one cue on a Ugh. squat technique, no one cares. You're the only yeah. one who cares. Because yeah. it's like, yeah, the, this 30 second video isn't going to teach you how to squat yeah. exactly right for life. It's just some pieces of advice that can lead them in that direction of learning more. And so it's like, yeah, you, the, the more you overthink it, it's, it only brings you down. Because like you want to just be posting more and like 
yes, obviously make good content, but yeah, you can't just like scrap every video yeah. if it's not perfect. And it's like, and if people like care about you, then they'll care about you regardless. Yeah. If yeah. you have like a bad YouTube video, yeah. it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I find social media too, it's, it's like 80% you and then 20% what topic you're talking yeah. about because that just kind of pushes you towards certain people but there's a lot of people giving advice on workouts you know so it's yeah. like they're gonna like you or this guy yeah. or whatever but yeah there's a youtuber right now his name is like Sam Selleck or something he's like he's like huge right now I haven't really seen some of his stuff but I think it's just like he's blowing up but he doesn't do all the fancy stuff you know he's literally just like he just puts his camera on a tripod and just talks and there's no fancy edits or anything and it's just people love it because it's so authentic and i guess he's knowledgeable and he knows what he's talking about right well, and it's kind of i feel like things are coming back that way almost like that natural long form content yeah as opposed to like those quick cuts i'm just like the, the tiktok version of everything yeah. like jumping in your face too much i think yeah. i think we were actually talking about this on the last podcast we filmed but uh i think people are kind of getting sick of the algorithm tricks like yeah. the that three second video that then tells you to read the 20 yeah paragraph caption like yeah. well because once you know you know exactly and then exactly. when i see that i'm like people don't like even yeah. if they want to read it even if it's interesting yeah. they're like you're tricking me i'm i don't want to or do sometimes this. i catch myself like oh i'm falling for it let me <laughs> yeah. let me get out of here you yeah. know yeah so it's like i think people are leaning more to just real like valuable genuine content but yeah but yeah like you're doing all types of like you know, like split screen videos where like you're explaining yeah. and you're doing it that, in the back that took me so long to learn <laughs> yeah I was like, oh, no you did yeah. you did a really it's good job sick. and then there's a few of them where like I set the tripod up, but I remember backing up once right over here and I hit it. And yeah. I moved and I was like, oh my God. Oh, now yeah. you have to retake but the see, whole thing. And I'm yeah. squatting like, it was oh. like my max. Of the oh like, no. I, I can't. Oh, like, oh, I see. <laughs> but yeah, That's same no thing. Worries. Like you're doing the split screen. It's If they're a little off, yeah. you know, nobody's going to like, even yeah. actually, you know, what's funny about social media is like, if there's a weird little thing off, that's almost better because then you get people commenting yeah. about it. It's like that doesn't make it any less valuable. It yeah. now just makes more people give a reason to talk about it and share yeah. it and whatever. That's the so. algorithm trick. You that's know? another people trick. Like, people it's will like, disagree with you guys. Let me let me squat like 600 pounds and you yeah. only have like two plates. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's just, uh, but have you gotten a lot of clients uh, from making social media content? Yeah, like I've gotten a few, like a lot of people reach out to me, I find. Okay. They want online training, which is something that I'm not really for too much. Okay. But I have had a few like people come in. And the main reason I got into social media was because like my hockey guys were starting to come back after COVID. Okay. And parents were reaching out like, oh, we looked on you for social media. You didn't have an account. Okay. So for me, it's for me, I see it more of as like an online resume. Yeah, not, absolutely. Not, not, not so much as getting clients, but like, this is what I do. This is what I know. Like, if you like this type of training, come yeah. on in. If you don't, yeah. then don't come. And you and, also like change it to like your name to Enfort Strength Coach. Like yeah. make it so when people are looking for Enfort, they see this content. The and SEO Make friendly. it searchable, you know? Yeah. Cause yeah, so, like, like so Instagram is like competing with Google for searches. Yeah. Like it's a, it's a search engine. So it's, it's very important. Which it's is, cool. which is very wild. But, uh, know? I think this was before the pod. I don't know if we were on, but you were mentioning YouTube as well. And I know you're doing some YouTube videos. Yeah, I like YouTube in a way because I feel like I can demonstrate my skills more. Like yeah, you yeah. can talk about different techniques and like what I think about like what a vertical jump program should be. Like mm -hmm. you can't just explain these things in 10, 20 seconds. No, for sure. exactly. Yeah. Like even like I filmed the warm up video yesterday, what I think athletes should do for warm up, And I'm like, okay, it'll just be a minute and a half. And then it's like two, three, four, five yeah. minutes. I'm like, oh, we're getting going here. Yeah. So I think YouTube is the best form like to convey my information to people. Yeah. Um, and what, people connect with you more too on, for sure. on YouTube, right? Because yeah. with social media, then they'll just scroll past yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when they have to go out of their way to look for a specific video, for example, how to get better, better vertical jump, and yeah. then they come across your video, they'll yeah. connect with you a lot more rather than just come across it on social media too. Yeah. And you'll be able to convert them into a, uh, into a client too. Yeah. Like Instagram is way more people will see it, but way less connection. YouTube's the opposite. A lot less people, but it'll actually, if they're going to watch a six minute video of explaining something, then they got something yeah. from it. And they you have care. a better community on YouTube, you know, yeah. that's when you can have quote unquote fans and, and that like, would follow you and stuff. <clears throat> and if you're, if you're doing a vertical jump video, for instance, like people are searching that, yeah. right? So like yeah. these people are already interested in your product. Correct. So that when they find you, they're going to be more interested. It's not mm -hmm. like they're scrolling through and I come up. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So. One thing too, that uh, like something you should try is you film the YouTube video, like let's say the stretch thing, it's like a five minute YouTube video, mm -hmm. and then just film a like five second like 
here's some a warm up, I, whatever, and then just cut a few clips of the YouTube video. It's like make the short form after, you know, like, yeah. and then you, Mason just gave me a job to do this. And then you have both. So now, <laughs> yeah, so now, now I gotta learn how to do that. And then you have a video on Instagram saying, go check out my YouTube yeah. video yeah. about this. Like, yeah. Well, speaking about whole this social media thing, and I know you mentioned you don't want to do like online coaching and whatnot. Why not tap into that? Because there's a lot of money that you can make into that, right? It's, it's not that I don't want to do it. It's that there's so much competition for people that people are just like so price gougy i find i think okay. if you're gonna do that you have to go higher end okay and um because yeah honestly when i when i think of that it is very much like here's a ten dollar yeah yeah but program and, uh, and again i don't i don't mind it i think it can be done very well yeah uh -huh. it's just the, the amount of time to put into it like i've done it before and i find the amount of time i get back like feedback from people like athletes writing me like hey can you check this video can you do this can you do that like it's not really worth my time for sure I feel like when let's say they're yeah. spending $25 a month and you're spending hours with them a month going over their yeah. videos. I, so, I, so if I do do it, it's like a higher end price. It, yeah, to like over it, it would like either have to be yeah. a high end where you're actually training them or you're more selling them resources. Yeah. Like that's true. Like, like yeah. you write a program or like a, like a, program like a vertical book. jump yeah. program yeah, exactly. and it's just a yeah. PDF and yeah. you pay yeah. 15. Yeah. And I do, whatever. I do have that available for people. Yeah. I'm not saying it's bad, but I always try to tell athletes, like, I'm not trying to, hoard this whole market to myself yeah. like if you can go see somebody in person you're going to have better results mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so like i would much rather have someone an athlete that i care about let's say they move away they go to toronto or vancouver go see somebody in person you'll do better than me coaching you online okay so like, it's, it's nice that it's nice to hear this from yeah. you because you it shows that you really care about yeah. these athletes you don't really care about the money like yo i can make an extra like fifteen thousand dollars a month if i just do this whole online stuff but Hearing that is really refreshing, you know, because a lot of people just do it for the money. Yeah. But again, mm -hmm. like those online clients aren't going to stay forever. Exactly. Right? So maybe you'll make a little bit more now, but like that referral from that athlete, maybe yeah. he sends you two or three more athletes in the next month. That's worth a lot more to me than like somebody yeah. doing well online. Because that's like mm -hmm. very transactional online yeah. too, right? And some, and you don't have control of like a one-on-one -on -one conversation. So you can just say a lot of bad things about you and it could tarnish your reputation. Yeah. And it's just, it's very hard to do a good job, right? Yeah. Like once you get over having 50, 75, hundred clients, it's hard to dedicate time to each one of these people. Mm -hmm. There's diminishing returns, right? So as you get more people, your quality of service is going to be worse. Yeah. 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 Well, I know right now you have like people training at your gym. Yeah. Like uh, you have uh, personal trainers. How do you, um, how do you make sure that you pick the right person so that it kind of lines up with your, with your business model? Well, for me, we have like Nathan and Antonios right now, and they're both been good colleagues and friends of mine for the past like 10 years. They were both at OIC. Yeah. Does Tyler train clients here or does he just work out Ty here? Tyler is just, he has like, and again, so we talk about like relationships you've built. Tyler has two clients and he's like, Tyler's got a good government job now. Where, okay. So he's just doing it because like these people like it. him and yeah. he enjoys it. It's not like, it's not for the money. Yeah. So like that's another person that he's a great guy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, all OAC guys. Yeah, so all. then so then back to like Nathan, like he brings a skill set that I don't have. Like he's an injury rehabilitation specialist. Yeah. He's been dealing with that. It's kind of like one of my weak points. Okay. So like anybody that comes into the gym and let's say they've got an acute injury, whatever, ankle sprain, low back, they go see him first. Mm -hmm. And then Antonios is a good kind of success story of mine too, where it's he's a great friend and colleague. He was a pro athlete that I trained at the OAC. And then now he's got into coaching. So having him back with me is like, very fulfilling like it's almost like a full cycle yeah mm -hmm. i didn't so, know you trained them at the oic yeah and mm -hmm. then so it's just it's really nice for me to have these guys because again it's trust right like mm -hmm. when you guys bring people on you have to trust them yeah. yeah you have to trust that not only they'll be good like to the facility but they'll be the quality of service they provide is high yeah yeah no yeah it's it's tough it's very hard to hire people like it's it's really hard to find people you can trust yeah do, do you find like do you uh do you have anyone like doing, I, I saw like one of the hockey kids was doing, or maybe one of the BMX kids was doing the reception. Like, is that just a, like volunteer hour intern type I have, thing? I have two co-ops now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So, Cause I was going to yeah. ask like, if, is, have you had trouble finding though? Is that just as hard to find someone at reception that you can trust and like these things, but um, at least that's the one you train, you know? I, I don't think so. It's just, we got to a point where the volume in here is so low that we don't really need somebody up there, I find, yeah. from an yeah. expense perspective. Yeah. Same with maybe you guys, right? Like if you have your own studio and there's only two or three people coming in an hour, you don't need someone sitting there for eight of hours. Of course, yeah, yeah that would be a waste. Yeah. Yeah, like we can we can make it out. Or like if we need to, we just put a lockbox or whatever. Like it's yeah. not at a scale that it needs a full-time yeah. person. And again, not yet. And it, yeah. Eventually. Yeah, and it will be. <laughs> but people, like the people that are paying for your services, whether it's podcast or gym, yeah. that doesn't matter to them. 
They yeah. care about the quality of service they're coming into. Like when people go to the Good Life, the Mobile Body, they want that experience. Mm-hmm. Correct. People that come to more, more private atmosphere, they don't. Doesn't matter. Yeah, it's yeah. Very a bunch different. of people were telling me like, no, doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. I know. That's a, one thing that's nice, especially like, cause yeah, I was I was here. Like we've done content here. I was working at reception. Like I've I've been here a bit, and like yeah, it's true. It, there's some. Uh, it's just cool people, like very laid back, like yeah. very easygoing people. And it's really nice. Like yeah, it's trustworthiness. Right? Yeah. Like you have to trust these people. And that's fostered over years of like relationships. For too. Sure. So like I could leave for six hours one day and like, I know everything will be fine. Yeah. Mainly mm-hmm. because the people that work here are great. I've known them forever and all the clients are really good too. Maybe lose a phone tripod or two, but <laughs> oh, yeah. <you> can. <laughs> otherwise yeah. you're good. But again, so that guy, that was, uh, there was like we had somebody steal something and yeah. that person was they came in for one free class uh, exactly okay. and so that's why like after that happened i said no never again because then if someone doesn't value you enough to put money into your service yeah why yeah. would they value anything else mm-hmm. here that's absolutely and it, there's it, no connection between you and that other exactly. person it's trin- yeah. kind of yeah. just transactional because that's the thing yeah when you're providing something with value other than just you know any other gym like you have value to provide so it's like you aren't just desperate to get anyone in for a free trial or free yeah. this or free that. It's like, no, I, this is what I provide and I need to trust you that I can trust you to provide it to you. And so it's like, you can be a little more strict up front of like what you need from someone yeah. Yeah. and have a real relationship. So are you doing free trials to get clients into no, the door? I, no, I, like I've had a few people, like usually when somebody signs up or like I know an athlete's serious, I'll take them through an assessment for free, whether it's 30 minutes or an hour. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but I don't really view it as that. It's more of like a meet and greet and kind of like to yeah. really talk to them, see how serious they are and them to get to meet me. And like, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Yeah. Okay. Like we, I don't think every person in the world can be a match for every other person. Yeah. So like right away, let's say they don't like, my coaching skills or I don't think they're committed enough, then we can go our different ways. How do you but convince I, someone to like go with you though? I don't convince anyone. You don't convince? No, I just kind of, we, I take them through my assessment and usually again, like word of mouth has been built. So like if some athlete has done really well, like I just had two guys commit to go D1. Oh wow. If, if they, if they tell somebody that like trained here and they did really well, that goes a lot further than any other sales technique. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's actually funny. You follow the, that book I read very closely. Like your job isn't to convince people because yeah. then, yeah, like you're just lying. Like you're, if, if they're making it very clear, this is not for them. Like nobody wins. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's a little bit of false advertising too. Like I am who I am. And I think that you kind of develop that as you get older too. Like this yeah. is my personality. I'm pretty like more introverted, quiet, laid back. If you like the coaching style where someone's yelling in your face, yeah. mm-hmm. like you may like it short term, but it's not gonna work long yeah. term. So. No, you're you're the coach that'll be like, like you haven't been stretching before your workouts? Like, come on, man, what are you yeah. doing? Like, you're not yeah. like, well, you're it's not more like, jumping down my throat. It's like, it's like, you know what you need to do, dude. Like, what are we yeah. doing here? And it's like, you have to take individual responsibility. Yeah. If you wanna get to a certain level of athletics, you have to, Yeah. right? So if you can't do your warm up properly, and I have to ask you 10 times, you're not the right person. Yeah. So no, I, I see that a lot of uh, a lot of your athletes are either BMX, hockey, or soccer. Are you are you only doing those type of athletes or are you open to any type no, of athletes? No, any, any type. Like I think I just, again, so I've fostered like different relationships. So Ian Crawford, he's uh, he was a professional lacrosse guy. Okay. And I trained at the OAC and he coaches BMX. So again, oh. like those are relationships, right? So he coaches BMX. So he's brought about 10 or 15 BMX guys here. Oh, wow. And then Anthony trained soccer guys he played soccer those are what those come from we had yaya in here too and he's a great basketball player and so through him we're getting more basketball guys it doesn't mm-hmm. really okay. like training doesn't have to be sports specific right you want to get people in the door let's say like you have a week whatever injury history weak ankles or knees we have to fix those before you go back out and the gym is just a place where you want to become as athletic as fast and as powerful as possible. It's not like we're doing basketball drills or okay. like anything like that. It so allows, it, it helps you perform <clears throat> on the court or on the field. Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. No, it's interesting. Cause yeah, I guess it's it's less like this way of training is for basketball or hockey. It's just like, are you training as an athlete who's trying to optimize the little things for your sport or are you trying to lose weight or this or that? So it's yeah. like athletes are your yeah. kind of direction. And again, like you would never want to pigeonhole yourself. Like I know it's good maybe for social media to have like a specific niche. Yeah. Like, you're yeah. like the basketball guy or you're the BMX guy. Yeah. But again, like in the real world, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Because the athletes are going to come to you and they're going to need help. So what you have to do is you have to understand the sport demands. Like the yeah. conditioning demands of soccer are different than basketball and hockey. Uh-huh. Understand those, condition them sports specifically. Uh-huh. And then just teach them to be the best athlete they can be. It was really interesting. Like I'm obviously going to butcher this, but you posted <laughs> something the other day like, oh, like, this guy's training for a basketball game coming up, so we got to do a lot of 
vertical pushing and pulling or whatever, like you're doing like pull-ups and then shoulder presses, like, like, you know, like I feel like a lot of people aren't thinking of it that way. Like you need to be able to train in this plane of yeah. motion and this plane of motion and then be able to do this. And like, it's about what your body needs to do and then what you need to train yeah. to get it there. And it's individualized and we go back to the online training why i don't like that like let's say you are weak in this rotational movement or mm -hmm. anything we have to fix that for you yeah and mm -hmm. that's why when my athletes come to me like i have a group of random athletes tennis people bmx basketball everything's individualized like we don't do a class structure like okay. so everyone's in here with me but they have their own programs okay yeah, and i think yeah. that's hey. what kind of separates us apart like i'll never do a class workout really okay athletes that, that makes a lot more <clears throat> sense now because for me i've always thought that like okay we're having like a group fitness program right now and we're doing all, everything together. But yeah. that actually and uh, it, explains you it just, all. You just can't do that, right? Let's say you have a hockey team and some guy plays twice as many minutes as the previous guy, the next guy to him. Like he can't do as much volume in the gym as the guy that played a lot of minutes. Mm -hmm. So you have to be able to like change each workout program individually. Is that a lot of work having to like really know your yeah. your client and your athletes? Because I, I, to me, that sounds like a lot of tedious work because you have to do a lot of like um, interviews and kind of just really know them as an athlete. I think the more you do it, like, again, I've been in the gym for at least 40 hours a week for the last 15 years. So once you do that, like once you see athletes come through the door, you know, like David, if you walk through the door, I can tell right away if you've had a good sleep, how you're moving, how, like any, injuries. how many hours of sleep do, you, do I look like <laughs> I've had last night? Not no, <laughs> probably about five or six. <laughs> You know what? I actually did get around. <laughs> actually, <laughs> no, but I can just six hours. But I, I function well on six yeah. hours, though. But it's more so that just like you, once I let's say I watched saw, watched you come in the door like yeah ten weeks in a row. Yeah. I can know when you've had a bad sleep. Let's say like you were fighting with your girlfriend, anything like that. You have to drop down volume, right? Because okay. our body doesn't differentiate between like workout stressors, life stressors, personal stressors, anything like that, right? So we don't yeah. want to run these athletes down. Yeah. Um, so you have to like it and then it's easy right like oh, okay just cut a set or cut your volume by 25 percent. like it's not that tedious you just yeah. make decisions on the fly that's really smart too though because if you're trying to push someone who's not at their optimal level yeah. that's when injuries happen right and that's the last thing you want people to yeah. have at this gym well that, that's the biggest thing with athletics too it's number one is you cannot get people hurt and yeah. obviously injuries do happen like you can get hurt lifting in the gym like yeah. stuff happens obviously but that's the biggest thing you'd much rather have a healthy athlete for a long time yeah. than like a really powerful athlete that's hurt all the time. Yeah. yeah. Like they'll, there's an expression, right? The best ability is availability. So you want your athletes mm. always ready to play. Yeah. Clip that. <laughs> that's a bar. In, in season. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it goes back to like what you were saying about videos and like how for you, it'll take you four hours for us. It's like half an hour. Like for us, if we had to figure these things out, we'd have to research every thing someone says and like the injury and this and that. Whereas like you've experienced it so much, like, like the example I gave earlier, like, that if I came to you at the gym at the OAC and was just like, oh yeah, this like right here on my back on the left side's hurting and you'd just be like, yeah, well you should do this stretch and that and then work on this. And that's yeah. like, yeah, okay. Well, it's cool. more you just take people through like diagnostics, like you do movement and like how like your pelvis would move. You yeah. can kind of see like, is it low back? Is it hip? What's going on with you? And usually where you're injured is a symptom of something else. Yes. Yeah. So if your low back's hurting, it's because maybe like your hip flexors are tight, you're sitting too much, you're not moving enough. Mm -hmm. That's what I learned here. Like yeah, I used to, cause I, I had a back injury and like, I thought it was, I need to like stretch my back, roll out my yeah. back, work out my back. Whereas it's like, it was actually a core issue and like a tight, mm -hmm. like other issue. Like, it's just like, it's wild. It's wild to like. And it's not really that, like I find some people overcomplicated. It doesn't have to be overcomplicated. Yeah. Usually okay. if you just get people like, don't sit for too long, get up, move around, do like your basic movements. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You'll feel pretty good. I yeah. have a question for the gym bros. So for the people that have gone like on like, a couple months hiatus at the gym like what's the best way to get back into it do you, should you just start like a week of stretching or should you just go back to how you were doing it before i think what you would do is do like a get a like i always tell people what's the best beginner program mm -hmm. and that's getting like a full body maybe two or three times a week but again it's to answer your question more specifically it's what you can do well so if you can only commit one or two times a week then do that if you can commit three or four then do that you want to focus on unilateral, so one-legged, one-arm exercises, and things that kind of fix your structural imbalances. So like, let's say you sit a lot, you want to do a lot of walking lunges, right? Because it's the opposite of sitting. Mm. You get into that hip extension, like long lever position. Mm. But and there, there's no one answer to give for everybody. Yeah, mm -hmm. but also like, because I find with me, yeah, obviously getting back in the routine, but if I like just do a regular workout like I used to, then I'll literally like not be able to move because I'm not used to it. Like, is it just, 
do it like whatever you can do at the time with just low weights or like I think there's something there's a step before that it's like why do you want to work out mm -hmm. right like you have to figure out why you want to go back to the gym because if you have that why figured out then you'll be more committed that's interesting like it's not like here's a program you're going to go do it you couldn't do it before so why can you do it now yeah that, it's that was more like this is why I want to get fit again yeah and if I focus on that then I'll do well that was the hardest part for me after I stopped powerlifting it was like I don't know why because I don't really yeah. care about looking muscular or whatever I don't really at the time I didn't care that much about my health or whatever like I'm like I'm good I'm fine <laughs> yeah. so it's like yeah. there was really nothing for me that I was like that's why I'm going I just yeah. going because I'm I should you know well usually it's like a personal issue right like you, as you get older like me or like my parents or anything you'll see things happen like different injuries yeah. maybe parents will get sick or anything like that right so you'll be like I need to fix myself so I don't end up like that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's usually a good why for people or or just maybe you looked in the mirror one day and you're like, Oh my God. No. Yeah. For me it is like, now it's just like, I just want to be able to function like in any yeah. situation. Like I Longevity don't want to like, is yeah. key. like, like he took me to a boxing class one day and I just like completely died, like <laughs> fully <laughs> but again, died. You're, you're going zero to a hundred. Yes, yeah. for sure. But yeah. And that's obviously too much, but yeah, I just, I want to be able to not like throw up. And that's how I've actually changed like my workout before. Cause like before that's how I actually have a ch Oh my God, I can't speak. <laughs> Before I used to just work out and do whatever I can, right? Like mm -hmm. just put my body to its like, push my body to its limit, you know? Like when I used to work out at OAC, I'd be like, oh, I don't know what I want to do. Let me hit a PR on my deadlift. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's like, true. Let, <laughs> let me yeah. clean, let me clean 225. Let me see if I can do it, you know? And yeah. I would just do yeah. all these crazy shit. And now that I'm getting older, it's like, man, I just want to be able to do this till I'm like 60 or 70, yeah. you know? So now I'm doing low weights. I'm not really hitting like crazy deadlifts or anything like that. And, but the biggest struggle that I have for me though, is that I'm very stubborn. Like for example, I have this shoulder injury with my right, with my right shoulder right now. And I injured it from, remember when we took that uh, Muay Thai class at Elevate, mm -hmm. I was sparring that kid. Mm -hmm. I've, I've, I don't know what happened, but anyway, I injured it. It's and like it's, a 13 year old fucked I, you up. No, it wasn't a 13 year old. <laughs> it was, he it was like, like 14, 14 and a half. Yeah, no, exactly. there, there was a 13 year old yeah. fucking me up. Bad. Yeah. Like, literally but I anyway, had to tell him like, he was just messing me up. I'm like, yo, it's my first time. He's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Like he was ripping me. <laughs> no, but that, but that's the thing. Like for me, I'm, I, I'm a little stubborn cause I love like fighting and I love training. And so I injured my shoulder and I was like, Hey, I'll, I'll rest it. And I, and I started hitting the bag again and I injured it again. And then I injured it again. I was like, now I'm like, fuck man. Like I'm still injured, but I still want to do it. But like, where's the fine line of being able to do what I want to do without fucking myself over? Well, that's where we talk about like how much volume you can do, right? Like yeah. you want to step volume back up after an injury. So let's say you hurt your shoulder in jujitsu or whatever you're doing. Yeah. You're um, like, you have to rehab your shoulder first and then drop that volume back up as you go. So like, let's say you can't just go from being hurt and then you feel better one day and then you get back to boxing for an hour. That's exactly right? what it's happens. Like, let's, get, like, let's say you get hurt, <laughs> you go see a specialist, you rehab it well, yeah. and then maybe 10 minutes of boxing, 20, 30, 40, and it, like, okay. that few weeks you take rehabbing it is gonna be a lot more beneficial than you getting right back into it. Okay. But again, sometimes I find with athletes that give a good athletic mentality, you need a little bit of recklessness. Okay. Like, you can't be so perfectly pragmatic in your lifting where it's like, this is 10%. Like, you want to push it when you can and you feel good, but you also have to know your limits. You have yeah. to know what but your limits are. But that's the thing. Are. I thought I was feeling good, and then I was sparring this guy at the gym. I threw a left hook, and then I just felt my shoulder, like, dislocate and the muscle, like, tear. I was yeah. like, oh, that's bad. <laughs> but and, like, all the blood just <laughs> rushed down do my that. head. I was like, <laughs> that, that, oh, this is bad. <laughs> yeah. That's where you get into something called sport demands, right? So the sport demands you do, like, let's say you're fighting or you're playing basketball or hockey. Whatever you're doing on the ice or on the field, it's going to be a lot more demanding than in the gym. Because okay. you're going 100%, right? Mm -hmm. It's pretty rare in the gym we're pushing 100% all the time because it's not smart. So, like, let's say you go and you're in a real, like, you're in a fight. Yeah. You have to go 100%, right? Yeah. And you're never going to be going 100% all the time for an hour on the, on the bag. It's just not possible. Mm -hmm. So, that's where you'll see people get hurt. Yeah. Like, yeah. In, the, in the game is that's what you're training for. Like, that's where you will push yeah. and maybe risk. Like yeah, that's exactly. where, where you're pushing your limits. Yeah. yeah. Like that's when you, when you're performing is when you're doing it at a hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It's well, very difficult. Though. But we got to get you in for rehab. Seriously. I definitely, yeah, that's the thing. I'm, I'm pretty stubborn though with myself. Cause like sometimes I feel like, okay, I'm feeling better. Then I'll just push myself back to where I was before. Yeah. You know, it's like, okay, I rested for a week and a half. Yeah. But, but right now I'm, I'm kind of getting smart though. My, my <laughs> shoulder hurts a lot. So I'm swimming. But then like, I'm trying to like swim, but it also hurts me by just doing strokes. Yeah. It's, it's that bad, but like, or I can't even sleep on my right side yeah. right now. 
because I like I'd wake up in the middle of the night because it's just agonizing. So it's not better. And that's a problem. Yeah, but I can throw a left hook again though. <laughs> so sure. it is getting I can't, better. I can't so step on it. So it is getting better. I should spar. <laughs> yeah. Well, your shoulder is like a very mobile joint, right? When you yeah. think about it, like your leg doesn't move as well as your shoulder does. So you're gonna be yeah. put in these positions, whether it's Muay Thai or boxing or hockey, anything. Like if you yeah. slip and fall, and you're okay here, like with your left hook, you're saying. Yeah. But if you fall and you're extended out here, like you're mm-hmm. gonna get hurt again. Yeah. In a different. That's exactly motion. what happened. Yeah. Oh, man, I need to be careful, man, because. Man, health is actually everything. As I'm, I'm only 26, but I'm realizing I need to slow down a little bit. That's one thing that I'm realizing because, like, my body doesn't heal the same way as it used to when I was, like, 15 or 16. Yeah. You know? Like, I remember I used, when I was playing baseball, I'd throw, like, 250 pitches in a week, you know, in, in one weekend, and that wasn't good. But, like, I remember, like, I'd be sore for two days, and I'd be good again. Yeah. But now I'm just like, oh my god, I did some shoulder press. And like <laughs> I'm still hurting. What what is the age? Like, is there a kind of t- age range where it starts to that starts to happen? Like, I, I I don't think so. Like, I'm I'm still okay. I'm 37 now. I think it's more detraining. Like, usually yes. when you see people get into their late teens, early 20s, just like for me or for most people, you'll see like you go to school, whatever. Maybe you hang out with friends more. You're kind of that health aspect takes a back seat. That's yeah. true. And then you come back into your sport, like I did. It's like, okay, I want to compete in things again, right? Yeah. I haven't played anything in five years, but I want to compete. So you start training hard, pushing sports, pushing athletics, and, you get, and you get hurt, right? Yeah. So yeah. I always tell people, like, try to keep some level of athleticism up in your programming, whether it's, like, for basketball guys that I teach, like, keep your running, keep your jumping. Because if you try to jump back into it, you're going to get hurt. Yeah. Because, yeah. yeah, like, yeah, you were younger at that time, but you were also training as someone yeah. competing in baseball. Yeah. So it's I, was like, co- I was training, like, six days a week, Yeah. you know? So and, that makes sense. And you're just much more sedentary now then yeah you're, like when you're younger you don't realize like how much you're moving around you're rolling around you're doing things on the ground yeah you're, you're just jumping and running sprinting you're don't we don't do that as much as young 20 year olds very true yeah yeah no, absolutely it went, i remember yeah in high school every lunch we'd try to like play pass with a baseball like on either ends of the football field <laughs> just yeah. like whip it like that, that was our day-to-day like you're just doing shit go out for recess go zero to 100 just sprint as hard exactly as hard. but that's the Full issue on. but that's the issue with being a, like a former athlete i would say is that like i still have that competitiveness mindset or like i know i can do certain things like for example like if i play catch with my friends i'm like okay yo i know i can like throw really hard yeah but i haven't played baseball in like two years and I'd go the same level, but it's like, oh shit, that was, that was a yeah. bad idea, you know? That, that sport demands, right? So you're yeah. always gonna do, push your body further than it can go in the sport. Yeah. Because you wanna do well, you're competitive, anything like that. Yeah. yeah. It's a double edged sword, you know? It's, it's a good mindset to have, but then it really like messes you up yeah. um, physically, though, you know? Well, hey, I don't want to take too much of your time. I know we literally took an hour to set this up, but uh, how long have we been going sweet, on for? We've been uh, we've been doing the pod an hour now. We've um, been, okay, wow. But uh, but yeah, I'm just curious, like just moving forward, like as we wrap up, like with the gym, you know, I think, you know, it's you've ha- you've had it for what two years now. Uh, this will be our third year now. Third year now. Yeah. Like, is this how you want it to go? Like, is this? Are you happy? You just want it to stay this way, or is there like? Is there an end goal you see like that's how I want it to be running one day? Yeah, a lot of people ask me that, like, will I franchise this out sort of mm. thing? And I, I don't know if that's the end goal or not. I think from a business perspective, it would be. Mm-hmm. But again, like me losing that personal kind of control and connection with all the people here, I wouldn't like as much. Yeah, I didn't <clears> picture <throat> that. I, don't, I didn't picture you franchising. No, I, n- I never would. It's not yeah. my personality, no. I don't think. Yeah. I um, saw it as like, if I, I anything, should, it's more never, you. But. Yeah, fair. You never know. But and again, yeah, it, it, if you figure out a like framework of finding these trainers that yeah. fit that that mindset then maybe there is a way but yeah i guess i more saw it as like you getting more trainers and you being able to step away yeah. a bit day to day the thing is i'll never be able to step away mm-hmm. like it's just i love being on the gym floor with the athletes i cannot see myself not being there yeah mm-hmm. ideally i wouldn't be here like 60 70 hours a week that would be nice for me but i can never just give this up like some of my mentors are still doing it they're like 50, 60 years old, right? Yeah. They're still doing it. And I think the good people in my industry will always do it because we love it. Mm-hmm. What's one thing you think you can <clears throat> implement into your business right now that would prevent you from being here 60, 70 hours a week? Do you have a hard time delegating because you want to yeah. feel like you want to be in control? Yeah. Okay. That is hard. That is hard, yeah. Especially when you're really passionate about your business. And like yeah. even going back to that whole like franchise thing, the thing with the issue with franchising, I think, too, is that like, for example, if you someone open up 
another location, let's say in Orleans, right? You have no control of what's going on over exactly, there, yeah. mm-hmm. right? And then like, if they do such a terrible job, then it tarnishes your reputation and it's just an overall bad, yeah. bad experience for everybody, right? Yeah, like we talked about, like the, the short-term financial gain from that wouldn't be the long-term like personal loss that I would take from that. Yeah. Because you know? again, like this is a reflection of me here and I value that and I think every client here feels that. So mm-hmm. if I were to do that and you had a bad service over there and it's a bad reflection upon me, mm-hmm. like, I would take that personally. And people mm-hmm. don't know that, right? People don't know that on a business side of things. Like they just think, oh, it's yeah. on for, it's yeah, just Yeah, it's like, a company. Yeah. It's a company. Yeah. It's owned by Warren. Yeah. yeah. Regardless of where it is. It's true. So that'd be very difficult to do. Man, but yeah. business movies, yeah, that that definitely be the that would be the way but if you want to make de- delegation money. is hard though. Yeah. yeah, like just because I think that like well you guys know like the amount of passion we put into this and learning, like all the stuff that I the programs that I build for people I put so much time into that for me to delegate that to somebody else mm-hmm. I know they're most likely not putting the same amount of work in. Or you'd be paying like it would not be your average employee like. Yeah. <clears throat> that you can't really hire that passion of like this is my thing that yeah. I that represents me. Yeah, no but one yeah. will care about your business more than yourself. That's that's, true, that's yeah. just the yeah. bottom line of it, right? Yeah. But yeah, other than like getting a little of your time back, you, like day to day, it's this is what you want to be doing. Yeah. Yeah. Even after being here every day, like this is what I love. So yeah. I'm happy to be like it, when I drive into work in the morning, I'm not upset. Yeah. If it's like 4:45 in the morning, I'm happy. That's yeah. which is a neat sensation right? yeah like other jobs people talk about like how miserable they are and everything like when i hear that i'm just like well then change something yeah yeah like you don't have to be stuck yeah. did you feel that at all at, at the oic like uh no because i controlled my own schedule and again i felt more i was more like working with clients and athletes than i was for the oic yeah yeah like, that's how yeah. i viewed it too so it's a similar the obviously OIC, this is a little more yeah of course exciting but and like you're, i'm truly thankful for all the clients like maybe same as you guys too because without the clients i'm really nothing right yeah so like, without them i wouldn't be here mm-hmm. so i try to convey that to everybody too yeah like if people want to stop paying for my services i can't have this gym mm-hmm yeah that, that's a difficult thing about being a business owner right it's yeah. like you have full control of everything it's not like an employee where like you could do nothing all day and you still get your paycheck at the end of the at yeah. the end of the week right whereas mm-hmm. here if like you don't get any money it's a reflection of your work yeah. right it's a reflection of what you're doing and what you're not doing exactly and like if things have to get done like the floor needs to be mopped yeah, like, yeah. it's not like it's nine to five okay i'll do it tomorrow it's like, exactly no, i have to do it now so i'm gonna stay late tonight clean the bathrooms, whatever it yeah. takes. But there's a beauty That's about so it though, is that like, you don't mind doing it. Even I though, I, even though like, I wouldn't want to be cleaning someone else's bathroom, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. but like, I, I'm willing to clean my bathroom. I'm willing to mop the floor. Yeah. Like it, it hits different. Like for me, like I wake up, it's like, oh, today's going to be a long day, but it'll be a fun day. Mm-hmm. Like I'm willing to work. That's the biggest difference between like you, where you have to work and where you want to work. Right. And, and that's, it's neat. Cause I, that's your perception. Yeah. It's the same task, but you're perceiving you doing that same task differently just because yeah. it's for you. Yeah. yeah. That's how I, I view it as almost meditative when I'm off the floor. I'm just like, this is nice. Like I've always wanted this in my life. So yeah. sometimes yeah. I just take a step back Absolutely. and just think like, this was my goal 20 years ago. Yeah. Why wouldn't I be happy? Back then, I would have said, I'll mop the floor for 40 hours a week just to be here. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. That's, That's a so beautiful true. perspective, you know? I love it. Well, as we finish up, if we have any athletes or anyone listening that wants to check the place out, what's yeah. what's the go-to? Where should they check it I out? I think just go to www.nfort.ca, E-N-F-O-R-T dot C-A. Right or my there. Instagram, yeah. Yeah. Nfort Strength Coach. Yeah. You are you taking new clients right now? Or are you, are you athletes, fully booked? Athletes, yeah. Good. Athletes, as soon as the summer starts, it gets very busy with all my returning athletes. Mm-hmm. Okay. But right now, like I have a, two multi-group athlete sports, so we just get different. doesn't matter what sport you play, I can fit you in. Okay. But other than just training with you, they, they, they can do physio oh, here, yeah. we have physiotherapy, eat rehab. Yeah. And we have physiotherapy, injury rehab, yeah. and different athletic development coaches. So I actually have a basketball guy here now and Anthony who specializes in soccer, but Anthony is very good at everything. Mm-hmm. Wow. Basketball guy, is that Sean? It's uh, Nate Garcia. Okay. So Nate Garcia was the point guard at Algonquin. Okay. Oh, I've seen I've seen some of his stuff. I think I follow yeah. him on social media. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. So, so he's, he's, very, he's very nice very good too. Cool. Yeah. Sweet. Well, check it out. Definitely come check the space out. It's Man, you gotta sick. add like MMA fighters here, bro. <laughs> Honestly, that well, that's, you, talk, that's you have a bag now, right? I, we have a bag. Oh, do you have a yeah, bag? Yeah, yeah. Well, one of my mentors was a boxing coach too. Oh, okay. Uh, he worked in the NHL for 25 years. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So I've learned a lot from him. He actually comes here in the day too. But like I've trained, like I trained at Pan Am. Uh, jiu-jitsu girl like at the OIC mm. she, was, oh, wow. she was a bronze medalist I believe 
and he talked about your 14 year old taking you guys out like she oh, she course. was like let's roll and i was like okay i don't know what i'm doing but i'm, I'm a big guy i can do this <laughs> yeah <laughs> just choked me out like 15 times yeah. and just yeah. out defeated it's insane but do you realize like that's a skill, right? It's like, uh, yeah, it's, like, it's like a 14 year old hockey player asking you to go play hockey against them if you've never played hockey. Yeah. yeah. People, just because you think you're good at something doesn't mean you're good at something else. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. No, it's true. And that's the, yeah, that's, a, that's an issue with a lot of people, you know, with like the thinking. Just, yeah. What's that, the classic, uh, like Bradley Martin just saying he can beat anyone up, any like UFC fighter up because he's, he's big. Because it's 260. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just think those people say that for a reaction. Though. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Or they've never had to like, because yeah. yeah, I did one box, like a Muay Thai class where I sparred and it was like instantly I'm like, oh yeah. yeah. It's overwhelming. Yeah. It's a different type of cardio. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. It's a hundred percent for five minutes. Yeah. yeah. You, you ask someone to go push a sled for five minutes straight, they'll last 30 seconds and yeah. Just die. I yeah. even find that with swimming, bro. Like for me, I can go for a five kilometer run, no yeah. problem. I can't swim more than two laps. It's actually really hard. I don't know why. But yeah. I think it's just different muscle that's involved, or maybe I'm yeah. just maybe my I, technique I think, is not right. I don't know. I think it's just experience. Yeah. Like probably. if you were to go swim every day for the rest of your life, yeah. And not not go run at all and then switch those, yeah. You'd find you'd be like running is so hard. Fair, mm-hmm. fair enough. Yeah. But it's weird. It's same muscle, which is your heart. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's just so different. That's though. interesting. Right. Yeah. But uh, no, but yeah, awesome. Check it out because uh, yeah, I mean, this is just one spot. You know, we got the small gym there. We got the turf up there. Like, there's a lot to see here. It's a sweet spot. There's a lot of content you can see online. Right? Yeah. There is a yeah. gym tour that uh, that well, you have you on your website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check it out. Yeah. But no, thank you. I remember Warren. that this was still sweet. the yellow wall or orange. Yeah. It was orange. Yeah. Was it orange or yellow? No, it was yellow. It was orange. Yeah, oh. yeah. It was like a brighter orange, not it, this orange it was either. Like a, it was like a Halloween orange. Yeah. Okay, okay. This new orange is very nice. Why am I tripping? Why didn't, what, what? It I was like it, a much less red orange. Yeah. Okay. So it was more in that direction for sure. Okay, I'm just tripping. Well, that's that. like when I moved in here, there were two separate gyms, right? So that was a small personal training gym and this was more of the group training gym. Okay. Yeah. And so when I moved in, I saw like a vision where that can be more injury rehab, more private, and this can be more of like general pop, more athletic population. In yeah. Here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, it's such a sick spot. No, absolutely. I love it. I love it. All right. Well, thank you, man. All right, this was very cool. Appreciate you having us thank over. You. And uh, now time yeah. to work out. Let's fix. Let's get it. Let's clean, <laughs> oh, let's clean I'm this not ready. Up. All right, peace, guys. All Thanks right, for watching. Thank you for watching. Peace.